It's a public health crisis of massive proportions. Lead in the water supply in Flint, Michigan. The children is a critical issue because lead that was in the water because of lack of treatment, it attacks the brain of a developing child. And it's irreversible. You cannot go back and clean it up. We can't afford to treat Flint like it was some sort of an anomaly and everybody feels sorry for the people of Flint. And they're grateful that it's not happening to them. It's happening to them. But we also have to deal with it in a new way now. It's not enough to have a sanitation system that's just collection. You have to treat waste locally, affordably. We can't hike it in and out everywhere. We have a responsibility with what we've done to the earth to not cause any more problems. There's so many things you can do with fungi, and this is what keeps us up at night. Fungi for food, medicine, textiles, fiber, packaging materials, even biofuel. Fungi just have this potential to unlock biological material that's a waste product in our civilization and convert it into something else. So that's what's exciting and everyone's like scampering onto this bandwagon to try to catch up. I think it's unlimited what we could do with mushrooms once we know more about the different varieties that are out there and more about their biology in general. It's lightweight, it's a great source of protein. It will be able to filter all sorts of pathogens and chemicals out of our water system. The amount of potential solutions that we have for fungi are tremendous. Good girl, How about this one. <laughs> it's her favorite. You open one door, there's 10 doors. Then you open up that one and it's 100. And all these have not been explored yet. This is just the beginning. Hi, my name is Sahana Shridhar. Hi, my name is Shamari Smith, and we go to Grace Church School in New York City. Um, we're here to talk to you about our fully compostable, lead-absorbing, mycelium-based water filter. So coming up with the idea for our microfilter was actually really difficult. We we couldn't figure out what we wanted to do for a couple of months, but we knew that we wanted to do something with mycelium. Our first assignment was to study mycelium, study what it could do, and look up articles and watch videos on it. And one of the things that really inspired this project was the human uh, burial suit, which uses mycelium to decompose the human body and the toxins that get left behind when we die. And um, that just get released into the environment. So mycelium cleans out the toxins and is able to allow your body to safely go into the earth. So after that, we decided that like, we wanted to really look at what mycelium could do. And um, we figured out that it could do more than just build itself into a brick. So, yeah. Okay, so how it works. So before you actually get your myco filter, you have the my composter, which is four components in the machine, your grinder, your microspore mix, your heating component, and your storage component. So first you start with the heating component, which you place your food compost in, and it's made of self-regulating heating wires, and this will kill the bacteria in your compost, the fungi, whatever is growing, um, and so nothing will interfere after the filter is made, but it won't cook your compost. And once that's done, you'll put it in the grinder, which has your mold for the filter attached to it. And you put your microspore mix and water, and that will grind and make a paste with the compost. And in your microspore mix, it's gluten-free pure oat flour. So for anyone that's allergic, it's also safe to use, as well as white rot fungi mycelium threads. And so once that paste is done and it's in the mold, You'll place it in a storage compartment and it will dry for 72 hours or three days and afterwards it's usable. Yeah. So somewhere in the middle of creating this design, we decided that we really wanted to introduce something of like a biosensor to, to our project. So um, we wanted to create a, bio, a biosensor that um, causes a color gradation in the mycelium and we figured out how to do that. So a uh, biosensor is sort of made up of two components. It's made up of a 
biological component and a transducer. So the biological component can be an antibody, a nucleic acid, um, an enzyme, or a whole cell, which could be a bacterium or something of that sort. So when the analyte or the thing being detected, in this case lead, interacts with the biological component, it causes a chemical reaction and then the transducer picks up the reaction and translates it into an electronic signal, which causes the mechanism to create the biosensor to, to cause like something of color gradations or something else that you want to happen. We haven't exactly designed the intricacies of it because that's a whole process in and of itself, but we know that um, the idea is really feasible. And you, with our lead biosensor, we know that we would use a bacteria called P. aeruginosa, it's very compatible with lead and we could use it as a biological component uh, for our biosensor. So we were initially thinking of doing other countries that have a lot of um, water problems and water issues with uh, clean water, but we decided why not go local? So we chose Flint, Michigan. The consumption of lead is extremely harmful and a lot of children were facing like lead poisoning and had a lot of health issues with it. On top of that, there was also a lot of plastic consumption. Um, so in the first three weeks after the city of Flint had declared a state of emergency, um, 100 million water bottles were consumed because the water from tap was unusable. And that meant landfills were being occupied with tons of plastic waste, which is extremely harmful to the environment. We decided why not create a filter that isn't harmful to the environment and also removes lead, solving two issues that the city had faced. So we we know that like this whole filter is sort of lead-based and flint-based, but we really wanted to take the idea outside of that and just like sort of hone in on one thing, but we know that it can expand. So mycelium isn't just a one-trick pony. Mycelium was able to reduce E. coli content found in water streams that flowed through it and also absorb chemical waste that is found in water streams that flow through it. So just bringing awareness to the fact that it can be implemented in different communities was really important and that we can simply change the spore mix and introduce a different type of, of fungi that would do something better that might be more helpful to another com community and still have the same concept remain the same. So once you're done using the filter, um, the filter will the biosensor in the filter will create a reddish color and that means it's ready for disposal so you have two options for disposal you can either throw it in your normal garbage or you can also use it as a fertilizer um so if you have any if you have um, any plants that are not edible or you have a backyard or a field or anything you can use it as safe plant fertilizer as long as it's non edible the plants and it's completely safe to use and it's another eco-friendly method so. one point of concern in in our project would be the fact that the mycelium needs to be alive while it's put in the filter and while it's remaining in the filter it needs to still be alive to fully and properly absorb the lead content that's passing through it so we realize that having the heating compartment only solves one of the issues of, of sterilization, but not the second issue, the fact that other, um, other pathogens might be able to, to cultivate themselves within the filter even after it's being used. So we think that adding the extra step of, of boiling the water after the water has passed through the filter is probably necessary for a household just to make sure that the, the water is completely safe and healthy to drink um, and that you know what you're putting into your body so that the boiling of the water would kill the pathogens and allow you to drink the water. But we also wanna make clear that it doesn't take away from our whole design process because boiling water would not get rid of lead content, but our filter will. Yeah, so uh, here's a funny jingle advertisement video that we created. The micro filter is a thing for you. When your water is bad, go get your scraps of food. Just take your compost, put it in a cup. Then you add your spores after it's heated up. You should take three days to let the fungus grow. I'll put it in the 
filter, let the water flow. When it's turning red, you know that time is up. So put it in the 